Central Bank of Nigeria releases guidelines for financial technology operation in the country. They include a shareholders funds of 2 billion naira. And activists say a suspect paraded by the police as a gunman is innocent. Family members say he only came visiting and was unjustly picked up. talking about these and many more issues today on The Breakfast. Welcome to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. I will go on a very quick break and we'll be right back to give you what is the top trending. Yo, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's now time for Top Trending. So many issues really have made the headlines in the past 24 hours. And one of them really is about the constitutional amendment review that has been, you know, holding across the nation. You know, analysts have been calling for this, saying, let's take a look at our constitution and try to adjust where it's not working. You know, so at one of the, you know, constitutional review that held in Lagos, we saw, you know, a drama that occurred due to, you know, registration and entry into the hall in one of the hotels in Lagos here. So what you're seeing on your screen basically is an altercation between Senator Oluremi Tunubu and Nigerians who are trying to simply gain entry into the hall to make their voices heard. So the, the gist of the story basically is that, you know, some Nigerians had been on the queue waiting to, you know, register and gain entrance into the hall. But then, you know, they were told that registration had ended. Despite the fact that they were told that registration had ended, some, you know, top government functionaries tried to, you know, gain, gain entrance into the hall and they were led in through the back door. And the, 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 the hall was shut and the registration was allegedly ended when, you know, Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwuru came in through the back door. So it was closed, top government functionaries came in and then they were also led through the back door while ordinary Nigerians who had, who had come to, uh, you know, air their opinion were not allowed entry into the hall. So this top government functionary was going through the back door. Senator Olura Mitsunobu was trying to lead this person in through the back door and Nigerians, you know, followed, you know, that uh, top government functionary to say, if he can be allowed in, we have been on the queue, we would get in as well. And, you know, Senator Olura Mitsunobu, you know, begin to, you know, exchange words with Nigerians. And what we saw on the screen was that she called one of the women a thug. I needed to see the woman, she is... She looks decently dressed, apparently, you know, and uh, she was called a thug. Nigerians did not have it. They were insisting on an apology. But Senator Oluremi Tunubu said she saw what she saw, she said what she said, and she would not issue a retraction, she would not issue an apology, and Nigerians basically began to banter. That's what we've, what we've been seeing on social media now. And this, this is a big issue because beyond this particular incident, you know, the name Oluremi Tunubu has not been in the news for very fantastic reasons, Osarege, would you agree with me? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Nigerians. I've finally been let into the conversation. Good morning. So, um, well, Remy Tunubu has, um, you know, more times than, you know, a regular been, you know, found in controversial situations. Um, so I think it was sometime in 2019 before the elections, you know, she... Uh, while, you know, during the campaigns, you know, had said to um, a person on the streets of Lagos, um, you know, you, you evil people will not, you know, say we're not a trust owner. You know, she made a statement like that, you know, which was seen as a, a, a tribalistic. Um, and then, of course, uh, lately we also spoke about her statements in the National Assembly where she was um, asking, you know, Senator, you know, are you now PDP, you know, simply because he was complaining um, about the situation in the country, uh, basically saying, you know, as long as you're with the party, you should turn a blind eye to whatever, you know, uh, chaos, you know, Nigeria is dealing with at the time. 
Um, and then now, you know, this. So, uh, you know, I would always, you know, be able to, you know, realize that, yes, you know, a lot of people are human, regardless of what position you are in society, you know, government official, uh, public servant, wh wherever you are, you know, you're still human. And every now and then, the human, you know, part of you will, you know, spark, you know, would show itself. Um, but, you know, it's also, you know, it's, it's also demanded, you know, from public officials and from persons in certain, you know, spaces and certain uh, fields, just like journalists. Um, Ahmed Issa is once again, of course, in the news because of a new video of him slapping mm -hmm. somebody else. Um, and people have also condemned that, you know, regardless of who you are, you should be able to control your temper, con control your tongue, control your reactions to certain things. And that's what's expected of you. So it's, it should be the same thing that is expected of a senator. Um, you know, who has been there for many, many years, representing Lagos uh, Central, I believe. Um, you know, there are certain words that you shouldn't use. And, you know, you cannot take away the frustration from Nigerians when they see things like that playing out. They are trying to get into the Constitution Amendment um, 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 uh, Hall and... Um, you know, they, there's, they have, of course, started to see that the doors are locked, but people are coming in, th in through the back door. You know, and so, you know, that was the reason why there was, you know, you know some commotion at first. And then she stepped in and used the word thug. Um, but I would give it to the people who were there, who were present, and the woman herself who... Um, stood, up. stood up for herself, you know, and of course said, you know, you have to apologize, you know, I'm not a thug and some of all of that. And a couple of people also joined in to say, mm -hmm. you know, the same thing. And I, I give it to them for, you know, being at that place and realizing, you know, their rights as Nigerians and the fact that, you know, a senator has been sent there to serve. You know, you're not a god, you're not a demigod, you're not anyone's, you know, father or mother. You are there to serve the Nigerian people. And you cannot walk around, you know, throwing out insults, you know, at the people who put you in that position. Um, and so she should apologize. You know, if we were, you know, simply in a, I would always say in a sane mm. society, um, she should, you know, put out a public apology to that woman um, um, who, you know, was insulted, you know, because she, you know, in every way was demanding what she believed was rightfully hers. And even if, you know, um, Remy Tinubu didn't think, you know, that she, you know, deserved it or it wasn't her right, you didn't, of course, warrant her being called a thug or being insulted. Um, so once again, you know, I would, you know, say kudos to those Nigerians who stood mm -hmm. up for themselves, you know, and were able to make a statement clear to the senator um, that you have absolutely no right, you know, in, in any part of Nigeria to, you know, throw around insults like that at the people who, you know, have put you in that position, who have, you know, allowed you to be in that position to, in quote, serve mm. uh, them. I, I think, you know, many lessons from this story. First of all, the fact that Nigerians... Okay, the first thing is, I was concerned when this, you know, constitutional review came up because... I, I was like, someone like me, I would love to be in that hall, not as a journalist, but as a Nigerian to air my own views. But when you look at the timing, you know, people have to go to work, people have to go to school. How would they be able to make out time from their busy schedule to do that? That was my first concern. But then to see how Nigerians have made that sacrifice to attend, that's the first one, kudos to them. Secondly, they went there, they queued, they waited for God knows how long. And then some people, because they are government functionaries, these people, you know, in particular, they were lawmakers from your state, you know, other Nigerians were locked out from at the front and they were bringing in government, you know, officials from the, through the back door. You are no more important than I am. Why should I be denied entry? I had taken public transport maybe even climbed an Okada or a tricycle to come to that place. But you had, you know, you had, you had sat comfortably in your cars, your driver had driven you there, you relaxed, and then you're getting preferential treatment left and right. I don't think that should be. That should be one of the things, if you're talking about constitutional amendments, that should be one of the things we're looking at. Everybody should be equal in the sight of the law. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying, obviously. No, I, was, I thought you said, <laughs> you know, no, they need to no, amend constitution no, no, to no, let no. people enter. I mean, pe people should get equal treatment, Absolutely. you know. So I, I, that's, that's really the first thing, the fact that, you know, this corruption of a thing, you'll be on queue, on a queue for hours, and then somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody will just come down for me, from me, from me, big car, and will just get, get ushered to the, to the front of the line. That really isn't cool. Yeah. It's not a great message to pass at a constitutional review hearing. Also, the fact that, you know, Nigerians could speak up, like you mentioned, and, and how she could just make statements like this. To be honest, I have no expectation for Oluwa Mitsunubu regarding how she should behave and not behave because she has proved herself. Yes, I understand when you said human beings, have, you know, they can, they can be human beings, but as a leader, there's a certain character 
and certain reputation that is expected of you, even if that's how you are indoors. When you are out, you should, you should behave and comport yourself as is demanded of a leader. You don't come out to call someone a thug. This is an elderly woman. I mean, you could see how properly dressed she was. Someone who probably has kids and grandchildren, and you open your mouth and call the woman a thug, and they ask you to apologize, and you say, I said what I said, I saw what I saw, and you would not apologize. Totally wow. And that's, that really doesn't, doesn't sit well with, with any Nigerian. We also have something else that is trending, um, a man who has been arrested and... Um, yes, um, and we're talking about a man called Mr. Ibi. Okay, first of all, um, there's a picture that went viral on social media. It's a picture of about um, four or five Nigerians, many of them stripped, you know, their shirts off. And um, the statement from the police is that these are unknown gunmen who were arrested. Once that video, once that picture, you know, surfaced, that's, that's what you're seeing. Five male Nigerians, you know, their hands tied with their clothes. Okay, seems the police that didn't even have enough funds to purchase handcuffs to start with because they're tied with, you know, fabric, basically, and stripped, <sighs> you know. These very, very important issues, really, Osai, we, we, we have to mention them. And when this picture surfaced on Twitter, you know, um, with the, the, the Inspector General of Police saying that this, these are unknown gunmen, you know, they were paraded, they were arrested, Nigerians immediately began to comment. You know, someone said, the, the man on the far right, the man with the white shirt, the man, you know, with that um, red, uh, you know, drawing this, you know, pointing to him, you know, people began to say, this man is my uncle, this man is my husband, I know him, this is Mr. Ibe. He, he works with a company called Evomet Construction Company. He, he works in Bonny Island in River State. You know, he's a native of uh, Mbalitolu in Imo State. Apologies if I didn't pronounce that right. He's married, he has kids, he worked in Bonny Island with his son, that he had come to Owere to prepare for the burial of his father. That his father's burial was supposed to hold this Friday, tomorrow, May the 28th, 2021. He had left Bonnie Island to Ore to come bury his father. And unfortunately, he was maybe in the wrong place at the wrong time and he was arrested. I mean, that's the picture of Mr. Ibe there with his wife and his kid. And the last picture you saw of him, you know, clad in a, in, in a corporate attire. And basically, people are saying, this man is not a criminal. And just when you think that, oh, maybe all oh, the other guys are criminals, the other picture, you know, the other four men, people began to say, oh, I know that man, that man in the middle, his name is Daddy Fresh, he's my barber, he cuts my hair in, in they mentioned the name of the community. People say, oh, this man is my barber, I know him. The other guy, people say, oh, he's a fabricator, I know him. So Nigerians began to speak up and people said, the other people now who maybe, they have no access to the internet or they have nobody to speak up for them, how would they get justice? Even well, these ones, people began to say, I know these people. So, the so, police is notorious, like we already yeah. know, for just going to random places. Maybe they're head of a crime and they just pick up people. One particular situation, in my own area, the barber in my area, he cuts my father's hair, cuts my brother's hair. We all know this man. This guy was just walking around on an environmental Saturday. And he mentioned that, um, you know, a, a, a bus just stopped and they picked him they, they picked him, put it in, in the bus, they took him to the station, they put a, a load of weed in his hand, took pictures and said they caught him with drugs. The whole community had to rise up, go to the police station, contribute their money for a bill to say, no, we know this guy, he's a baba, he's always in the shop. It was on an environmental Saturday for Christ's sake. Yeah. So the police is notorious for doing things like this and well, it's, we um, just did justice. So this, you know, I, I would, you know, still, you know, leave a, a little space for, uh, police investigation and some truth. You know, the fact that, you know, they have jobs doesn't, you know, completely rule them out of a possibility of being gunmen still. People have jobs and still commit crimes. Um, so there is that. And then second, you know, this, you know, is also a reminder of the you know, numerous cases, you know, and the possibilities of, you know, hundreds, thousands of people who are currently languishing in prison cells because you know, they don't have people who would fight for them and speak their truth. Um, they were arrested, picked up randomly and thrown mm -hmm. into jail. Um, and, you know, you probably would never see them again, you know, because they were accused of some random crime and just thrown in there without going to, without going to court. Um, so there is that. Um, also, you know, it's another, you know, time when we, once again, as, you know, people should speak against uh, um, uh, police uh, parading 
suspects who have not been found guilty, who have not been sentenced, you know, to you know, to jail or anything, but simply picking up people or arresting people and parading them. The EFCC does this a lot, and Nigerians have complete and have continued to complain and speak against this. Um, if a person has not been found guilty, then you should not, you know, publicly parade any person and you know tag them with any crime. But this is, you know, just yet another incident where this is happening. Um, luckily, you know, some of these people know them, um, or rather have people on the outside who know them uh, facially and have been able to identify them and say, um, you, know, well, you know, I don't think this person is guilty, you know, this person is this, this person is that. Um, but we, of course, you know, have a, there's a lot of work that needs to be done with the police force, you know, to refurbish the police force. You mentioned the fact that they are tied with, with uh, cl uh, cl uh, clothes or their shirts, which is embarrassing for, you know, the you know, giant of Africa that the Nigerian police force doesn't even have handcuffs. Um, you know, if you were actually going to, you know, arrest people um, at the stage that they were, they shouldn't even be in handcuffs. You know, they, you know, if you decide that you want to parade them, but no, well, they're they're tied with with shirts, you know, which is a very very crude and embarrassing um, thing to put on, on you know, on, on display. So there is so many, so many, many, many angles, you know, that you know that make all of this wrong. I hope you know that somebody does actually point out these things, and and of course. Um, one thing that I've also noticed, you know, with the Nigerian police is when there's public outcry for action, every young Nigerian at that point in that community is at risk because the police would always try to find a way to show that they're acting. They would always try to find a way to show that they've taken some action. And it could be innocent people, but they need to, you know, tag them in, you know, unknown, unknown gunmen or unknown men. Um, they need to find, you know, a way to prove to the people that, oh, you know, we've made some arrests. These people, you know, like you've said, are very, very likely have no business with the unknown gunmen or with any crime. But the Nigerian police wants to show that, well, we are working. And, you know, this is the result. So there's so much that is wrong. I read a story yesterday on Twitter of a guy who, he was, who shared a story. And it's not the first time I'm hearing something like this. A per, a two guys who were driving. They were going on a short trip, and on their way, you know, a policeman flagged, or a soldier, oh, sorry, a policeman flagged them down, you know, for a lift. You know, so they gave him a lift. The friend, you know, was very, very um, 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 not interested, you know, in this, you know, little gesture that his, the driver was about to do, you know, do. And so he complained and complained and complained, but eventually they gave the policeman a lift. After, you know, dropping him someplace which wasn't where he said he was going initially, they decided to park the car not long, you know, not far off, and you know, just check where he was, he was in. And he got back, um, they got to the back of the car, raised the foot mat and saw two bullet casings uh, there. Um, luckily for them, they, you know, did that because they probably have heard of stories like this before. They threw those bullet casings away. He called one of his friends who works in the police force um, and that one told him, okay, when you get to the next checkpoint, then, you know, let me know if there's any problem. Immediately got to a checkpoint, they were stopped. The policemen focused on the that police. spot where this guy was sitting. Um, it, and from what he described, he said that they weren't even standing on the road, but immediately they saw a car that, you know, looked... looked the description. Exactly. They immediately jumped up, you know, and, and asked them to stop. Um, then he called his friend. The friend spoke to one of the police officers. And, you know, after a couple of minutes, they asked them to leave. You know, and one so of police the basically plant evidence in people's Well, these cars. are people's stories. You know, it's not the first time. I've heard a story like that before in the Southeast. So it's not the first time that, you know, these things happen uh, or I've heard things like this happen. But it really just tells, you know, about a system, uh, you know, the criminal justice system, the police system in Nigeria that is so, so, so poor that, you know, when some of all these things happen, you don't, it doesn't shock you anymore when you see things. It's just really, really disappointing. Really disappointing. Um, once again, okay. these people, you know, that showed up in that picture, luckily have persons who recognize them and have social media. We are at yes, least social media, like this, social who, media. Exactly. Who can speak up for them. Imagine those who didn't get, you know, this lucky. Imagine those who didn't even get their pictures posted for people to identify yes. them. Imagine those who are languishing in some police cell right now when only boxers. They've been there for the last See, three weeks. when I was in Adamawa State, um, you know, there was a prison outreach that we had. And one of the guys in the prison mentioned that he was in Imo State. He had an altercation with his neighbor and maybe he slapped his neighbor's wife. And because of that, the neighbor arrested him from Imo State. They transferred him to a prison in Adamawa. He has never heard from his family member since then. So you can imagine, maybe the family will say, oh, my husband went out and never came back. Yeah. So till now, like no family member knows where this guy is. He's been in prison for God knows how long. Yeah. So, I mean, remember we talked about top trending yesterday, um, today in history yesterday, and we talked about how police 
in the US wanted to prosecute somebody and they conducted 28,000 interviews. They had 7,000 pounds of evidence such that when they get you, they get you. There's no wrangling out of it. It's not to say that there are not people in the US um, prison that were there wrongfully or it, for, the, for not committing any crime. They are. But, but they do their due diligence. They carry out investigations. A Nigerian policeman would just come. Okay, he heard there was, a, there was an issue here. He would just go there. Anybody who was, who was, who's, who's there, they just pick you in their car and they take you to the police station and say, you're a suspect. Is that how you conduct investigations? Oh, then you, pay, you bail yourself. You know, if those guys are suspects, maybe they were there. Why don't you ask, why don't you interview them? See if maybe they saw somebody, saw something that can lead to the arrest of the real suspect. Then you just arrest people randomly. It's just oh. it's so unfortunate. Um. Once again, you know, it just ex exposes uh, the rot in the system, in our, uh, you know, our security system, in our security infrastructure in general, um, and the need for um, so much more to be done to improve on where we are, to save innocent lives, to also be able to, you know, um, carry out proper arrest, proper investigations. The amount of the billions of naira that is invested in security every year needs to be accounted for, properly accounted for. Unfortunately, we have an accountant general, auditor general of federation, you know, and we've not been able to see proper auditing of, um, mm. you know, every single budget. You know, yes, you know, there's a, a percentage of utilization every year that they release, oh, the budget was just, you know, so so and so percent and all of that, but every single penny, um, that goes into uh, the police force. The Ministry of Interior should find a way to ensure that every single penny, if it was meant to buy weapons, if it was meant to buy uniforms, if it was mm -hmm. meant to fix police stations, if it was meant to buy vehicles, every single penny, uh, computers, CCTV cameras, whatever it is, every single penny should be accounted for. Indeed. It is sickening to see suspe suspects still being tied, you know, uh, hands uh, being tied shirts. with their shirts. It is sickening. And we, we don't, that's that is, that is animalistic behavior. And it's a, it's a pity that, you know, this is where we are. But, uh, welcome to Nigeria. Oh, and I think the police needs to remember that it was a situation like this that led to the NTAS protest. When Nigerian police force or Nigerian policemen just harassed, intimidated people for no just cause. They need to keep that in mind if they want to avoid another protest anyway. Well, Let's take a break here and uh, we'll come back to discuss uh, off the press, see what's trending in the newspapers this morning with Mr. Ezekiel E.I. Tok.